Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made the petticoat for my Saki Zhao Cinderella dress. So, let's sew. <laughs> Okay, so in this video, like I said, I'm gonna show you uh, how I made the petticoat for my Saki Zhao Cinderella ball gown. Um, if you have not seen the artwork, I will show you here, um, here, right here, <laughs> the artwork for this. I started the undergarments for this in April, I believe, maybe even March. I made the chemise, the corset, and the grand peignet. The peignet are six feet wide. Um, and I have actual videos on all of those, so if that is something you would like to see, so you can kind of figure out like how I got to this place and like why there's this random pink purple monstrosity in the like in between projects. Um, this is a background project I'm working on throughout the year, and sometimes I get I make progress on it, sometimes I don't. Uh, it's just kind of how I feel. But uh, so basically, I drafted this pattern myself, and if you would like the pattern for this petticoat. I um, am gonna be selling it on my website. So basically for the pattern, I did draft it myself over this big boy that you see here. Um, it will be available on my website September 1st if you would like to purchase it. I will talk more about that at the end of the video. Um, but anyway, I drafted the pattern myself so that I could have some extra fluff and something that I noticed in the fan art or in the, the art in general, there are these little pink ruffles um, peeking out at the bottom of her skirt and I thought like this would be the perfect place for a petticoat. Okay, uh, and yeah, let's just get straight into making it. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to achieve here. This is just a really rough sketch of um, the, the peignet and um, in my introduction, I'll make sure to post a picture of it so you can see it, but this is kind of what I'm trying to achieve here. And I already went ahead and measured uh, what I like this distance and this distance so that I can start with the top one. This is our actual fabric that we'll use and I bought a cotton to match this in case this was not enough because the cotton was $2 a yard and this was $18 a yard. Um, so we'll do cotton for the top layers and this for the bottom layers if necessary. We will find that out. I've got some white cotton just to make like a quick little mock-up for. Um, and I'm gonna attempt to create this shape. The one thing about this is, um, as per my uh, like reference photo, there are three pink ruffles here. So I'm going to try to do a double ruffle at the bottom that is just two of them together. And then I'm going to try to do a third ruffle on top of that that will have a decorative stitch um, I want to kind of do a smocking stitch to help gather it down and, and create around this to create the three ruffles at the bottom. So we're going to start with just trying to figure nail this right here because once I get this done, this is easy. Um, and the, the big key for this is this right here has to have a slit and right here so I can get to my pockets because pockets and none of this math matters. <laughs> All right, so that's the goal for the day. Let's try this. All right, so this is where I am at with how this looks. If you can see right here, I'm going to actually extend that by three inches. So I've already updated my pattern so that it does that. Um, and this is just the front half, but I'll show you on this side here. I want it to cover the, the big gap for the pockets, but it's gonna still open up. So this is gonna get hooked onto the back half. We're basically gonna make two of these exactly the way they are. So now it's time to get started on the actual construction of the real petticoat. If you bought the pattern online, we are gonna be starting from the top and working our way down. So you can cut out all of your pieces beforehand, but when I go through this video, I'm gonna show you clips of me cutting them out as I go. Um, so right now we're starting at the top tier and I'm cutting out my four trapezoid pieces. And then I'm also gonna um, mark 
um, on the the tallest end of the trapezoid there should be a marking and that's actually going to be marking where our pocket will basically end or our slit for our pocket end um, and then where the like actual petticoat starts to be sewn together um, this is also how you get in and out of the uh, petticoat so if you need this to be longer you're gonna want to adjust it but I think that it should be fine for anyone that um, is able to make the waistband to their size um, also the waistband you are gonna want to adjust to your own personal size for me on this one I made it 18 inches in the front and back but I actually hook my hooks around three and a half inches into the front band which I'll show you near the end of the um, near the end of the video Okay, so this is our second tier here and I just have all of these um, pinned together and basically what I'm going to do, since they're all on the salvage, I don't have to actually worry about making these a French hem or anything, which is awesome. Um, so these are all just going to get sewn up and then we'll put our, um, I'll have to overlock the each side of this. Uh, this is our top tier right here, and I'm gonna do a French seam on these because they are not clean. And then um, a same with how I mentioned with these being on the salvage, this bottom part of the tier is on the salvage, so we don't have to clean those up. And this is actually gonna get tucked away into the, the waistband. So um, for the purpose of like making these clean, I just have to do a French seam here and then overcast all of this. Uh, and then we will, so I'm assembling it all now, and then I'll assemble this on these sides too, and I'll show you guys how I do that once I get there, but we're gonna get all this done first. I will link a video in the cards to how to sew a French seam so I don't have to explain it every single time I do it, although I only do it twice in this video. Sometimes I end up doing it a dozen or so times. Um, but once I sew my French seams on the center front and center back of the top tier, we are going to sew the sides together which will include the slits for our pockets. So now I have a front and a back top tier panel and I want to sew them together. So I'm going to line up my marking that is um, that I marked on the uh, taller side. It should be about 18 or so inches um, of the, the non-center front side. And I'm going to sew those together with the right sides together. And then we're going to go in and roll that entire... Um, seam like the entire seam allowance so I sew that first one on three quarters of an inch instead of five eighths of an inch and then you can see here the rolled um, hem and it's easy to do this when you press it so like I will actually like roll it and press it and so then I'm gonna sew both halves of this down so it's each side of the seam now you're gonna gather your fabric down at the top of the top tier um, this can be done any way that you prefer with a ruffle foot, a gather foot, a walking foot. I actually do the old-fashioned method of a uh, basting stitch and then a second basting stitch and then I hand gather mine down. Um, but this is really just your preference. So for the waistband, you're going to want to adhere your interfacing um, the any however it says on the instructions i used dream weave ultra from floriani this is my favorite um interfacing it doesn't need a damp cloth and that's why i like it um also it's just really strong and it makes my waistbands um just it's really great for waistbands anyway um once you've done that i'm i folded my um, edges in by a half an inch and I'm stitching them down now before I go ahead and uh, press the piece in half. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, pre uh, on the fold line, I'm pressing my um, waistband in half and then I also will mark the center front and back front. Obviously these are mirror images, so like you can, if you want to, decide what is your center front and what is your center back, or you can be like me and make that decision once you add your hooks. But either way, I will um, mark it, and now we're gonna actually start gathering down um, the ruffle, or the top tier. 
So if you're doing your gathers like I did, or like, yeah, like I did, um, you're gonna wanna pin the side, obviously, to the side of the waistband, and then the, the center marking or the center seam to the center marking on your waistband. And then I use the strings, the tails of the strings, to actually gather my piece down um, as equally as I can. I try to make them, um, pretty well distributed. Um, obviously if you used a ruffle foot or something like that, you can skip over this part. It's, you've already done it. You just have to now pin it to your waistband, aligning up the center front to the uh, side seams. Um, so yeah, and then now we're gonna sew it down using, um, on our machine, oh, now we're gonna sew it down on our machine at a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Okay, so I have marked this off uh, like basically six different sections and um, we are going to, when I can find it, we're gonna pin uh, this piece here. This is our second like row, of ba basically like our tier two. I've overlocked all these edges um, and we're just going, to, and I've also put in my gather stitch. Uh, I don't know if you can do that. I don't know if you can do that. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna basically, make every single seam line up with one of these pins and then gather down. So that's this step and this will take me a solid hour at least. Once all of this tear gets gathered down, we're then going to take it over to the sewing machine and stitch it down with a 2.5 millimeter stitch. Um, something to just be aware of is sometimes because of the way this is curved, the um, like bottom fabric, if you're looking at it the way I'm looking at it, likes to bunch up into the top fabric. So just keep an eye on that. Um, after that, it's time to hand sew the waistband. And so basically what I do is I just um, fold in my waistband around that top part, make sure any kind of fraying edge and gathered edge is tucked away. And then I just uh, stitch it down by hand. And this is one of those really relaxing steps that I love to do, even though I could just do this on the machine, but I enjoy this so much more. All right, so here's where I'm at so far today. This is day one. Um, I need to add the bottom ruffle down here. Basically, that's gonna be two ruffles that will be longer than the bot this white ruffle. Uh, they're gonna be connected together. And then there'll be a third one that's actually on top that's gonna have a smocking stitch to, and it's gonna be attached down so that it'll add a little bit of drama and motion and uh, uh, depth to this Pepto-Bismol pink floof-tastic thing. Uh, so yeah. All right, so I actually vastly underestimated how much fabric I needed. So I just went back to Joann's today and bought 12 more yards of this. I'm so thankful they had this pink. Um, so what I'm gonna work on with this pink and not the silk, we're gonna do, wow, that's not. <laughs> um, so with this pink, I'm gonna um, be cutting this out in strips of 18 inches for the bottom ruffle and I need uh, their 20, they're 44 inch wide total, I believe. Yeah, or 22 on the fold. Um, and I'm making essentially two ruffles together. So uh, yeah, we're gonna cut this into strips of 18, um, all of it. Luckily that's easy math because it's basically a half a yard. And uh, then once this all gets cut, I will um, sew it together and then serge it and then we'll get it put onto the uh, petticoat. So these are all gonna be steps that seem pretty repetitive, but uh, I'll, I'll like speed through them and explain what I'm doing each time uh, as we go. So I stitched everything together. Um, again, I cut my stuff on the salvage. Something to note in the pattern is I actually automatically took the hem up two inches. So on the pattern, you guys are gonna have a 16 inch width versus 18, 18 inch width because um, what you'll see at the end of this 
is uh, when I tried it on, it was about two inches too long. Also, you can shorten this if you wanted it to be shorter. Um, and this is a double ruffle. What is included in the pattern is really only for a single ruffle because I don't really know a lot of people that have a need for a double ruffle, but if you want to do a double ruffle, then just double that bottom row. That's really all it is, and then you're going to overlock them together. Um, but make sure to press your seams before uh, open before rolling that hem. If you've never sewn a rolled hem before, I will link my video on how to do it in the cards. Um, but after I've sewn my hem, I am going to just press the entire hem. All right, so if you are only doing one ruffle, you can just overlock this top edge like I am here. Um, how I'm actually doing mine is I have both layers of ruffles together and I'm surging them together at the same time. So not only am I cleaning that top edge, but I'm actually connecting these two. I just think that it will uh, look cleaner and better um, ultimately at the bottom. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing in this step. And then um, next we're gonna gather these down. So this method of gathering down the ruffle shouldn't really be new to you. I, um, I measure the tier above it, um, I measure it and then divide it by 12 and I mark each of those 12 markings and then I line each piece of fabric up with it, like each seam up with that marking and then I just pull the string um, from the left and from the right until I get it kind of the way I want. I even at one point started marking the halfway mark so that I could, you'll see here, so that I could pin it halfway and then I have an even better distributed set of ruffles. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of start ruffle, uh, gathering this down like I did every other tier. Again, this is something you can do with a ruffle foot, gather foot, walking foot, etc. Okay, so uh, now it's time to try it on and walk around with it. As you can see, Eva is just like, no way, Jose. Um, I have to lift it up in order to walk because if you saw that hem is probably, I'm gonna say it's closer to three inches on the ground. Um, so I don't like that. I like my hem to hover. Like I want that little bit of a half of an inch off of the ground. I also put my peignet on backward. Don't judge me. I tried to get this done in like 15 minutes. Um, this, the shots in, but, uh, so basically I'm going to take the hem up. Also, there is going to be a part two because this is more of the functional aspects of the petticoat. Oh, look at her. Um, we are now for part two, which will be in a couple of weeks. I'll focus on the detail aspect, which is adding a third to ruffle and some detail trim and things like that. All right, and check out these hooks right here. They just hook on and you're gonna place these uh, based off of your measurements, obviously. And then we've got this little slit here for when we get our pockets. I haven't made my pockets for this costume yet. All right, and that's basically how I made my petticoat for my Sakiza Cinderella. I am actually on the side working on another very detailed aspect of this petticoat that I'm not sure is gonna work, so I'm actually refraining from holding up, uh, sharing it in this video. If it is successful, I will make a second smaller video on how I made that detailed piece. But since this is a functioning petticoat, and where I'm at right now, like we could just wrap it up, call it a day. Um, I just really like doing weird detail things. It, I, it, it's kind of part of that like thought process of like every costume I make is a piece of art. And so like I need to treat every piece of it like it's its own piece of art that like comes together with all the other pieces to make this big monstrous piece of art. I don't know. Um, but so I don't know that this like this detailed piece is gonna be um, successful but if it is then like when I'm done with it I'll do a video and it'll be linked to this video at the end if not then hey you guys just got to learn how to make a really cool petticoat for 18th century gowns or just wide gowns in general um, for the pattern, I'm going to be making it in three sizes and it's going to be available on my website September 1st. Um, it's going to have three sizes and it, the sizes aren't actually based on your, your hip 
or like your waist or anything, that is actually gonna be um, something that you'll be able to amend like yourself and I'll have instructions on it how to do that. But basically it's gonna be, there's gonna be one meant for uh, six feet wide, which is what you guys saw me make, one meant for four feet wide, which is actually the one that goes over the simplicity pattern. And then um, a final one that is uh, meant for pockets. Uh, so you're like three and a half feet wide type thing. Um, I think the other actual simplicity one I know is four and a half feet wide. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but basically that'll be out on September 1st. So if you would like to purchase that, it helps support me. It is a digital pattern, so don't worry. It's not like you're gonna pay $15 for a simplicity pattern and another five for shipping. It's gonna be, I think, $4.00. It is gonna be $4, so don't worry about that. It'll be on my website on September 1st. If you would like to support my work further, I do have a Patreon. You can uh, go find it down in the links below. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, tell me what you're working on in the comments below. I love hearing what you guys have been working on. Uh, some of you have been even sending me photos on Instagram, which makes, like, it's, that's so nice. And thank you so much for just, uh, interacting with me on the on the social medias and, and keeping me inspired because you guys know I am a mess. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Happy sewing. I'm still trying to like find a way to wear my hair the day that it's washed without damaging it too much, but like my bangs are just, this is, this is what we've got. Um, Eva, what you doing down there? What you doing down there? What you doing down there? <laughs> Welcome back to my studio. Wow. Face. Yeah.